Shumai, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Chief Executive Connects. Now, for those of you who saw my last video, you'll know uh, we've moved into a new season now. Last time we were running around a University Hospital Wales site in the heat of the summer, looking at all of our active travel support. This time uh, we've moved into the winter and so we've come indoors and we're going to meet a colleague from the Shaping Change team, Cal Allen Ridge, who is leading a project called Project Stamp. Now Project Stamp, some of you may already be familiar with, but is a new uh, digital system to track and manage patients and Cal is going to explain that to us give us a demonstration, but importantly, give all of you the opportunity to connect in with that project and maybe even bring your own similar or adapted project to bear. I just wanted to remind everybody, as we head into the winter, Christmas is coming, as they say, there is lots and lots of winter respiratory virus out there. We've got colleagues off sick, we'll all be familiar with that. So please, if you have not yet had either your winter flu or COVID vaccination and you are eligible, I really do urge you to take up that opportunity. It is the best way to protect yourself, your family and loved ones and your patients and also organisational resilience as we head into this challenging period from those can be quite debilitating diseases. We also have seen in the last few days the launch of the NHS Wales national campaign, um, help us to help you. This is an encouragement to all of us as we head into this very busy period to use services wisely. Make your choices depending on what you need. You don't always need to visit the emergency department. You don't always need to see your GP. There are community pharmacists who can offer minor treatments and prescribing, there are optometrists and physios and all sorts of colleagues from right across the multi-professional team available to support primary care needs. So clearly, if there is a, a major life-threatening emergency or a limb-threatening injury, that is definitely something we would want to see in the hospitals. But other than that, please take a look at the campaign and the materials that will help all of us navigate to the right services so we can ensure that um, those with needs are seen by the right level of clinician in the right place as quickly as possible. So that's it from me in terms of that reminder. I will speak to you again before Christmas, but right now over to Cal and Project Stamp. So today I'm here with Cal Allen Ridge. Morning, Cal. Good morning. Now, Cal, you're leading and supporting a project called Project Stamp, mm -hmm. and you currently work in the Shaping Change team, don't you? So yeah. maybe let's just start by what is the Shaping Change team and what's your role within it, Cal? And then maybe a, just a bit of an overview of what you know, what is Project Stamp? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so to start with, the Shaping Change team is one of the corporate functions that supports the organisation to, to literally shape change. Um, <laughs> so we do that in a number of different ways yes. and our team is split across different functions. So we have functions that help people with quality improvement and just getting going with small tests of change and how to structure that to be more effective. We have teams that specialise in innovation and bringing new things into the organisation that really help us look at transformation and bigger changes. Uh, and we have project and programme managers who help us use structure those processes and, and support various clinical boards. Great. So in a way it's the a team of experts in change, change management, project management and so on. So if colleagues listening to this think oh I've got a project I'd like some support with, how do they come and have a conversation with yourselves about that and how would that um, maybe be securing the resource to support? So we've got a number of different resources that you can access across the organisation. Um, you can stop any of us if you see us out and about in the organisation. Please do approach us and, and don't wait for us to get in contact with you if you, you've got something you want to talk about. Um, we've also got dedicated access via the SharePoint sites and a form that you can fill in. So your change okay. idea doesn't have to be fully thought out. You don't okay. have to have everything sorted. If it's just that spark of an idea or a frustration that you and your team are sharing, 
get in contact and then we will reach out okay. and unpick it with you and okay. help you with it. So Cal, tell me more about Project STAMP. What is Project STAMP? So STAMP is an acronym. Of course, we love an acronym in the NHS. <laughs> um, it stands for System for Tracking and Managing Patients. Okay, um, System for Tracking and Managing Patients. Yes. Okay, got that. And it started in June, um, about 18 months ago. Um, with an off-the-cuff conversation between myself and the Head of Patient Flow and Site Services, Louise Farrow, okay. um, just about our need as an organisation to understand where patients are in the system, what is the thing that they're waiting for, and where are critical points where resources are being constrained, and to capture that digitally in a way that was useful for staff and patients to have an impact on them. So we started to have a conversation about how we could do this. We started looking at organisations out there that have already started to have this kind of digital view of what's happening across the health yeah. board and the structure and how we could do this. And it drew from some of our previous experience in working with other organisations that have implemented similar systems. Okay. Over the last 18 months, it's really expanded and grown legs. So we didn't want this to be a project where a digital team was pulled together and we just digitised process. Yeah. We wanted to work with a whole stakeholder array and pull people in from different parts of the organisation who were doing the process at the ground level and help us understand what are the processes that they're currently doing in order to understand what's happening with okay. our patients and where they're at. So there's something about um, innovating and improving the um, workflow at the same time as moving it to a digital application or platform yes. and, and that's good to hear because we don't want to if you like, codify poor and efficient practice by then wrapping it in a digital yes. uh, wrapper or enabling. Okay, so that, that's that's really interesting. If you could um, describe, you know, the, what was the problem you and Louise were seeking to solve? So traditionally in quality improvement, we focus on one problem. Yeah. And actually with this project, we took a slightly different view and we looked at a multitude of different problems and thought, well, could we fix many of these problems all in one go. Okay. So they focused around kind of five main things. So it was duplication of effort. Are we asking staff to input data and information on patients in multiple systems or multiple places? How much time are staff using to collect information, to go to meetings, to pass on information between each other? Yeah. Um, or actual physically having to walk the organisation yeah. to gain information? Yeah. How variable are our processes? So even between our clinical boards, we have variation in how we manage flow. We wanted to standardise that yeah. and, and reduce that variation. We also wanted to massively focus on the amount of distractions that board teams have. Um, as it currently stands, there's many meetings that they have to attend. We yes. may walk to the ward and ask them questions. We're pulling them away from patient-facing activities to ask for information about yeah. what's happening. So we wanted to get rid of those distractions and we wanted to streamline communication to not have many different channels to escalate things up and wait for feedback on, have a simple system that everybody okay. can understand across the board. Sounds brilliant, Cal, because, you know, having been a nurse myself and worked in operational teams, I'm pretty familiar with what you're, descri what you're describing. I do remember being a ward sister and having the visit uh, maybe, I don't know, six times a day yeah. from the bed manager and... To be honest, it drives you mad because you're disrupted in whatever you're doing to have this conversation about what's changed in the world. So if we do have a more uh, standardised, reduces duplication, waste, efficient way of doing that, I think that sounds like something to be welcomed for everybody. It sounds like a great initiative. Now, I know you've got a screen to talk us through the visualisation of how this works. Would now yep. be a good time to, to, to yeah, step absolutely. So through I can that? show you a demo of the okay. system. So it's a web-based application that's available and already launched on every PC and laptop in the organisation. Okay. You log into the system with your NADEX, which is your normal computer login. So it's not an additional thing that you have to remember okay. or register for. And the first time that you go to log into the system, it will recognise if you're a new user and just ask you some prompt questions. It's exciting. I'm looking now. <laughs> what am I seeing? So as soon as you log in, you get this health board overview screen. Okay. So at the top, each individual clinical board has its yeah. escalation levels from one to four that many of us will be familiar with. Yeah. Um, and they will change by patient flow and site services. So this is just allowing everybody across the organisation to understand across our clinical boards where are our key pressure points. We then have a scrolling blue bar underneath, which is like the BBC News message that you would see. If you want to just pause it to give yourself some more time, you just hover over the top and it'll stop and, and give you time to do that. 
You then get a breakdown by site. So our four main sites are listed. So we have Landoc, UHW, Barry, and St. David's, and a breakdown of the clinical boards. And these graphs are designed to be interactive. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to focus in on surgery at UHW, I can click within to surgery and then it will break down what is happening within that bed base. So at the moment, this is live, is it, Cal? So this is a test data, test so okay. not our live So it's database. not the actual situation as we record yes. this film. That says 20 beds are closed, yep. 23 uh, occupied. occupied, and then we've got the green and amber ratings, which I assume is an infection prevention control status or It's a discharge else. status. So we discharge use uh, status. green and amber. Most people in the organisation will be used to us referring to green and amber man on clinical workstation. Okay. So it's a similar flag. Green is essentially saying the patient is clinically optimised and they're not waiting anything. Okay. These patients should be good to go today. Our amber patients are those that we're saying they're almost ready yeah. and they're pretty much clinically optimised, yes. but there's one or two things we're just waiting for. So this could be we're waiting for the MRI report to be signed off and reported, or we're waiting for that TTH to arrive on the ward and be checked and make sure it's ready. Um, so these are patients that we know not 100% are going today, but high chance they could go. We just need to unblock a couple of things okay. and they're things generally within our control. And rather than just give you the number, the graph is dynamic, so I can click on those five patients. It will then produce a live list for me. Okay, so you hovered over that graph and you're able now to get the detailed breakdown of the individuals that are yes. making up that number. Yep. Okay, that's great. So then you can actually explore the actual issues. Yes. So okay. I can go right down to yeah. that patient level, what yeah. is exactly happening with that okay, patient and where they are. So from a ward perspective, there's another screen to the left-hand side. Okay. This lets you go down to your original ward and you can search for a specific oh, okay. ward, you yeah. can go by clinical board. It tells me when the system was last updated so I yeah. know how live the information is and it gives me a forecast of what is happening with my planned discharge dates over a seven day period. I can also then see which patients have been seen, which haven't been seen by a consultant and I can see which are due to leave today and which aren't. At any point in the system if you see any words that you think oh, I'm not quite sure what that means, you can just hover over it with your mouse and it'll pop up with the explanation okay, of, that's, of what that abbreviation that's very is. Useful. At a patient level, you can edit an individual patient or you can use a board round screen. And traditionally, what we've been recording prior to STAMP was around 16 to 17 data points to understand what our patients needed to do. It could take a nurse anything between two minutes and eight minutes to update a single patient record of those data points. What STAMP lets us do is collect 27 data points in half the time. So it pulls all of the information into one screen for you. Excellent. But it sits on top of every other system. So if you update stamp or a piece of information is available in another system somewhere else, it will pull it through and display it for you. Okay. This is a screen then that would give a ward sister or a staff nurse or a, a team member the opportunity to update information on an individual as that ward round is happening in real time or at some point during the, the process of care. Yes. So this is a way of actually embedding the best practice or current best practice in the organisation as well because you become more familiar with the processes, is the frequency, isn't it? And that yes. embeds a way of working. Very good. Very good. Okay, where next are we going with this? So um, as it currently stands in the organisation, we have 51 areas that are eligible to use it and we think there would be a benefit to them. Okay. And when I say those areas, they're adult inpatient bed holding areas at the moment. Okay. So it's predominantly in medicine, surgery and specialist clinical boards. Okay. We have excluded our ICU area, our SDEX and our assessment units, only because they've got a slightly quicker turnover and a slightly niche market. Um, so we're working with those teams to understand how we can best design and adapt the system need. for what they need. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, and and uh, Children's Hospital for Wales and, and Children's Young People's Services so and Women's Services. Plan in the new year to okay. work with them, again, adapting the system and the questions to make sure it's right for the patient. We currently have 39 who have been trained and are using it. Excellent. We have 12 more to go. Okay. Uh, and as of the end of this week, which will bring us the first week of December, we're hoping to have the remaining 12 all online and using it. And that's covering all four sites as well. So we've done UHW, UHL, 
Barry and St. David. So okay. all of the data points that we collect in Stamp, we're sharing with our biz colleagues. So all of that information can be available for reporting and dashboards. Okay. We're kind of working on the basis of if you need the live decision, then we want to build a view within Stamp for you. Yes. If you want to look at historic trends and patterns, then we're working with our bids and our SFN colleagues to build those dashboards for the, the teams that need them. Okay. Um, but we want to make sure that this information is stored centrally so that everybody can access the rich data that we've got. So we've got a, a ver variety of different engagement across the organisation. On the overall, the first reaction is naturally, oh, another thing yes, that you're asking course, me to do. Of course, of um, course. And we completely understand yeah. that. Most teams that have then gone on board with it and started to use it, there is a bit of a, a lag where you start getting used to updating something new, doing something sure. different. It will slow you down to start with. Um, and we acknowledge that, but there is support available for you. So we will try and work with you and come in and support teams if, you, if you'd like us to do that yeah. and work alongside you whilst you go through that period. But we've actually got um, end users who have kindly uh, given us their time to give feedback about their journey and what that's been like. Yeah. Um, so we can share some of that information from Ward sisters and managers about their experience of using the oh, system as well. I think that's well. so important it's because it was all well and you and I talking about it. But yeah, maybe we can add one of the feedbacks to the video blog so that colleagues can know who to go or names of contacts that are already deployed. Yeah. You know, because it's really good to be able to talk to a peer and say, look, have you done this in your ward area? You know, Cal says it's going to make our life easier. Is it making, is it making our life easier? I think that would be great. What, if anything else, would you like to tell me or, in fact, hopefully the many CAV colleagues that are watching this video about STAM that we haven't covered? Have we missed anything? So I think the main thing from me as well is that this is a... a, a piece of software that's been developed in-house by Cardiff and Vale. So it's yeah. not a third party. I don't work for another company. I'm a Cardiff no. and Vale employee. And that also gives us an advantage if it's an incredibly malleable system. Okay. So if there are things that you are thinking, this doesn't quite work for us, or this isn't capturing the right information that's enabling me to focus on what I need to do, please actively feedback. So I can, again, I can give you a link that allows you to feedback okay. to the team. But also, if you want to be involved in designing and creating and looking at your processes to make them better, please reach out. We okay. don't want to design anything for you and hand it to you. We want to design it with yeah. you. Okay. Well, Cal, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me today and sharing this great innovation with us. Um, and I do hope you have a, re a really great rest of the day. So, Cal, Diokum Vau. Thank you.